Welcome everybody. Today we are going to create different pages, but we're going to start with the same background. I'm going to be working with pages out of my DIY 6x6 art journal. And in this art journal, I took the masterboard approach to creating or pre-creating some of the backgrounds. And that's what we're going to start our pages. Now this gives us the opportunity to do two different pages with basically the same starting point. So when I'm looking at this hole, I could do some of the things to the entirety of this page, this fold out page, even though they will be two pages in the end, or I could completely start each page differently, jumping off from the existing master board or background that exists already. So on this one, we have browns and pinks and blacks, and I just wanted to add more pink to it. I needed some color on here. I'm, I'm not a neutral person, so I really wanted more color. As I started putting in the pink, I thought, oh, you know, some of this is getting a little too dark. So I grabbed my white gesso and I start putting that on. This breaks up some of the elements of this page, add some white space. The paint will now go on it. So if I want something more pink or brighter pink, if I put it on the gesso, it's going to do that. So I've kind of done something. Now I notice one half of this page is fairly dark and the other one is a lot lighter. So I'm thinking I'm gonna let one be dark and the other one is going to be lighter. At least that's what I thought at this stage of the creative process. Now, when you were starting at the same background, some of the textures and patterns are, are going to be the same as well as the basic color scheme, but there's a lot of differences you can build into it. So here I'm taking this Punchinella stencil. This is an oldie but goodie from the crafters workshop. It's new to me and I'm using the circles and I'm putting that on with colors that are already in that background. So I'm using Naples yellow and I'm adding a little bit more black. This is going to be the dark page. So I'm adding some black. And since I have black on my makeup sponge, I'm just going to edge the page. This always helps me think about when, especially when I'm stuck and I don't know what to do next. Now I flipped through some of my napkins and I pulled things that had similar tones. And I love this napkin. It's called Potpourri Bell Jars. Now, as I'm trying it out on this background, I'm liking the colors, but it's a little too big as it exists for this six by six. It's dominating. If I was doing this in my seven by 10 art journal page, it probably would fit relatively well. So I'm thinking I'm going to just cut out parts of it and use parts of it. So I pull off the excess plies and then I'm gluing it down on copy paper. That's going to keep the colors true. If I glued it onto that dark, dark background, that would come through the napkin and we don't want that to happen. Once it's completely dry, I'm just going to cut around the bell jars here. And then I'm going to glue the two of them. I'm going to have cut one off off the edge and have it off the edge. This is a way of taking an image that's too big and making it smaller. Then I looked through my ephemera and I found this fairy and I thought, wouldn't that be cute to have the fairy in this bell jar? So I glued her down. The, the pink color of her dress made me pull this because it goes with the background. 
And initially I was going to leave this jar out and this would become a ephemera for an ATC or something else. And then I decided that I am actually going to glue it down. But I've changed the composition. So you can always tweak. what the napkin looks like and make it your own to fit what you want to create. I'm gluing this down with gel medium because it's on copy paper and it's a little heavier. So once that's dry, now here I have that middle bell jar is actually over the big bell jar, but because I put the fairy in that one, I want it to be reversed. So I'm going, I'm using some gesso and I'm whiting out areas where that bell jar is cutting in front and I'm going to change how it looks so that the bigger bell jar, the one with the fairy in it, is actually going to be over top. And it, this takes a little bit of thinking and doing over time and you'll see at the end pictures all the things that I've whited out. I'm whiting out the lines here. I think I white out a few more things because they're actually things that are in that second bell jar, that middle bell jar under that fairy's wing. But I figure it out as I go. And then I'm taking my angle brush and I'm shading that line. Here I realize that I've got some of those elements from the middle bell jar showing up in that first bell jar. So through a process of using gesso to white out what was there and shading, I'm changing, so the first bell jar is, appears to be in front of the second bell jar. I hope that made sense. I'm using a combination of black for the shading, as well as Payne's gray, which is a bluish gray color. I do go in on that bottom of that first bell jar, the brown, I paint that out. I really had struggles with keeping everything in view during this process. I think my camera needs to be, camera place placement needs to be readjusted. Now I'm just painting, over painting some of the areas just to brighten them. I wanted this pink to be a little bit brighter because I wanted your eye to go to the fairy. So here I have a very dark background, but my focal image is very light. And that's how I've balanced that out here, working with a dark background. And I continue to shade. I even shade on the outside of the bell jars. Now I'm adding some of the blue back in that was there just to make it look like it's glass. Remember I took the gesso and I had gessoed out a lot of that area. So now I need to put those lines back in. So I just do a combination of painting with gesso, with blue, to get the effect that I like. I'm using my Simplify Sentiment Pack, and this is fairly small, because remember, all my Sentiment Packs, you can resize them, you can make them larger, you can make them smaller, so they'll fit whatever size project or page you're working on. There is beauty in simplicity. Here I'm 
taking my General's Charcoal and I'm just bringing out the lines. There was kind of swoops and, and things there from the collage papers from the masterboard beginning that we started with. And so I'm just bringing that out to make those lines a little bit more pronounced. Then I'm coming back in, I wanna brighten some of that Naples yellow. Outlining the sentiment with the black Posca pen and scribble outlining the page. And there we have it, the finished page. There'll be more close-ups at the end of both pages. So now we are going to do the other side. And like I said, I the one was going to be very dark. This one I'm going to do very light. I'm going to lighten it up. And one of the quickest ways is to grab a stencil or several stencils. I'm picking one, and this stencil is a new one and it's called Deco Stripes from the Crafters Workshop, and I'm putting white gesso through it. I'm putting several layers to build opacity. Uh, if you use white acrylic paint, if I use my titanium white, I probably could have done it in one layer. And look, it just completely changed the background colors. So I'm still working with pink, black, white, and kind of a golden color. I've whited out the edges, and then I'm using this napkin, which is called Pumpkins and Sunflowers, and it has all these sunflowers in it. And that yellow reminded me of the yellow in there, so I rough cut them, pulled off the excess plies, glued them down onto copy paper, and cut them out once they were dry. Now I'm trying to figure out how do I want to place them? Do I want them up high or do I want them lower? So I take pictures along the way to help me decide which orientation, which composition do I like better. So while that first page is all very dull, dark and sultry, this one is bright and light. And I chose the sentiment, I think it's from my sentiment pack number three. Here comes the sun. And I glue the three sunflowers down with gel medium with the one in the center overlapping both of the ones at the side because I'm going to put the sentiment in the middle of that sunflower. I like how the sunflower shape matches the floral shape that was in that Deco Stripes stencil. I like when the different components work together like that. So you're not just randomly putting shapes and patterns that have nothing in common. Then I wanna bring out more of the yellow so where I had whited out the, that little bit of an edge there and lightened it, I'm going over that with yellow oxide, which is the color of the sunflower. And this is giving that yellow oxide border to this page. In part, there was a border because the stencil didn't quite fit, go right to the end. But I really like how this made that border. And by adding the yellow, I'm really brightening and lightening this too. I'm bringing out different colors in this one than in the other one, even though they have the same color scheme. Then I'm just brightening up some of the sunflowers by giving it a wash of color. I think this one would make a nice uh, six by six canvas or a uh, card. Then I grab my black Posca pan and I'm doing some doodling all around the stencil. Now this stencil is perfect for adding the doodling. 
I'm not sure if I liked it better before or after. Would you have done the doodling or would you have left it off? Which would you like better? But once I start, I'm kind of committed to doing it. Then I'm adding some shading to the sunflowers. So I'm hoping that you will go and create a master board and make two different pages using the same starting point and do two different applications different stencils often we do have two ideas and we never know which one would have been the right choice well in this book i'm going to be able to figure that out because i think this is what i'm going to do with most of the master board pages in this diy six by six journal Here I'm taking my General's Charcoal and adding some sketchy lines. To outline it and further bring out the sunflowers. I decided I just wanted to add some dots in the middle of this element maybe to match the sunflowers the center of the sunflowers I restrained myself and didn't do any splatters this time, but I could have splattered with gold. And there we have it, the two pages that started off with the same masterboard background, but they look very different. I hope I've inspired you today. I hope you take the same but different challenge. I'm gonna put this page back into the signature So which page do you like better? The one with the bell jars or the one with the sunflowers? Leave your answer in the comment section below. Until next time, go get creative.